Hello, it's Beach Cam's man and Celesti the bestie, and today we are heading to Cornwall on our first ever road trip. That's right, I've got to spend three days and nights with Beach Cam's man in a small camper van, so wish me luck. Coming up in this video, we visit King Arthur's Tintagel Castle. We are blessed with an incredible sunset at Bedrutham Steps. Celesti administers some suntan cream on me at Cape Cornwall. We see a sunrise and supermoon at Mausel. We get to fly around some Michael's Mount. And we have our final day in Newquay. But first, this adventure is brought to you by High Five Camping. They offer camper van and motorhome owners the opportunity to advertise and hire out their vans for others to share the great experience and adventure and camping on the open road. If you have a van you want to hire or want to go on your own adventure like us, please find their link in the description. As we left Dawlish and jumped on our first train of the journey, Celeste was trying her hand at the Cornish accent. But fortunately for her, I forgot to put the camera on. Celeste, can you do that Cornish accent again, please? We, she's she wants Cornish. us to... Obviously, going to Cornwall, going over the border, is a serious thing for us Devonians. Are you a Devonian now? Yes, I am. <laughs> I you think... have to get rid of that Midlands accent if we going across the border. Or... I don't even know where that was from. So um, we're, trying to, we're trying to work out to fit in. We are now approaching Saltash. Saltash, well that's my name, so I'm going to fit in there, but we're not getting off. That means we're going to go over the bridge. Oh, I love this bridge. Please take all your belongings. As we pass from Devon to Cornwall, we crawl over another one of Isambard Kingdom Brunel's incredible achievements, the Royal Albert Bridge. Opened on the 2nd of May 1859 by Prince Albert, this bridge spans the River Tamar between Plymouth and Saltash. It's one of the greatest bridges in the world, it is unique in design, an engineering masterpiece and absolutely breathtaking. We continue through Cornwall with some more Cornish scenery and make it to Newquay where the sun is waiting for us. Right, so we've arrived in Newquay, just got off the train, I'm just waiting for a taxi, it's going to take us up to High Five Camp in a place called San... somewhere, <laughs> um, which is just north of Newquay Airport, so we're going to head up there now. It's actually really busy, really warm, with a bit of cloud cover, um, but very excited. <laughs> Okay, so we're at Nuki, we've picked up this van, we've loaded it, look at how much stuff we've got. And we are going to Watergate Bay Camper Van Park. Yes. Yeah, so there's no so. places at all on um, the website, but we've just rang them and there's, there's lots. So, let's do this. We arrived at Watergate Bay Touring Park, checked in and had no time to waste as we headed straight to the mythical Tintagel. Tintagel village lies on the north coast of Cornwall between Boss Castle and Port Isaac. However, we are visiting the headland, which was once a thriving village in the 10th century with over a thousand residents, and at that time was a bigger population than London. It is believed that this was also the birthplace of King Arthur and that royalty had been living there since the 5th century. Merlin's Cave is also situated beneath Tintagel Castle, but unfortunately we couldn't access it due to a recent rockfall. Merlin's Cave is a 330 foot long sea cave. It stretches under the land on which Tintagel Castle stands, allowing you to enter from one side and exit out the other. Well, that's Tintagel and very magical it is. 
Uh, we didn't see any dragons. Are we supposed I to see did? dragons? No, you, no, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Head back to the van now. We don't know where we're going next. We shall find out. It's an adventure for us as well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we have a quick look around the village and head to Porth Beach to visit the beachside restaurant and grab a well deserved bite to eat. Porth Beach is set in a deep inlet with beautiful golden sands and is sheltered by headlands on both sides. We were able to park the van on the beach and there's a really nice vibe about this place. So we've just arrived on Porth Beach. Like oh, it's nesty. It's a great restaurant on pub there. We'll go and go and have a cheeky drink and some food. Menu. Man no menu. Restaurant shop. So we think, um, well we know we're gonna go to the what steps? Bedruth and Bedruth and Steps because we're not going to see the sunset from here if there is one. It does so look beautiful though. It, it is going to be nice, we're going to have some beautiful colours one way or another, um, but we can't see on the other side of those rocks over there. So we're going to go to Bed Ruth and Steps now, and um, we might have a barbie, mightn't we? Maybe. Maybe, we'll see if we're allowed. And then we've still got sort of just under two hours until the sun sets anyway, and um, so we're going to head there now instead because there's no food there and we're getting hungry. We've got some in the food in the fridge anyway, haven't we? We did come prepared. We have come prepared. No well, lighter then, no lighter to Okay, we haven't come prepared. <laughs> we're gonna be prepared. <laughs> um, we're gonna get lighter on the way. Uh, hopefully. Oh, I don't know whether this is gonna happen. Anyway, we might be eating raw sausages. <laughs> A short 15 minute drive brought us to Bedruth and Steps campsite, where they allowed us to park up and explore. This was a campsite we really wish we'd booked. A really nice community of campers sat around barbecues and open campfires, sharing stories over a drink. With the sunset imminent though, there's no time to waste. We need to get parked up and ready because this sunset looks like it's going to be phenomenal. Fly man. That's what happens when there's no black swans about. I get fly eaten. <laughs> he walks with the animals and talks with the animals. Right, so that. <laughs> there's so many flies up here. Um, it's just absolutely ridiculous. But wow, what a sunset that really didn't disappoint. We've got some amazing footage as you've just seen with the drone and we've had the uh, time lapse going, but there's so many flies just covering. You. Me, <laughs> not you, just me. Well, you know, you know what they say, flies round. 
We had a late start the next morning as there was too much cloud to see a decent sunrise so we rested up knowing the excited adventures we had ahead. Hitting the A30, we headed towards Cape Cornwall after our mate Trav advised us it must be on our visit list. Bored of the traffic, I decided to take a detour through Carbis Bay, past St Ives and head on to the B3306 West Cornwall Coast Road, which to some is one of the finest driving roads Cornwall has to offer. With the endless Atlantic on one side and beautiful West Cornwall Moors on the other, it truly is a great driving experience. As we reached the headland of Cape Cornwall, we were struck with these beautiful views. In the early 19th century, Cape Cornwall was believed to be the most westerly point in Cornwall. The two rocks in the distance are known as the Brysons and they mark the start line for an annual swimming race that ends at Priest Cove, which is where we're heading now. However, in seas like this, I certainly wouldn't want to be swimming there today. Right then, so we've arrived at Cape Cornwall and it's absolutely beautiful out here. However, <laughs> I'm dressed like this. So I've asked Ceci to kindly, well, where is it? I can do... <laughs> How big's your face? <laughs> it's my head you need to worry about. Oh, you want it on your head as well? I think Imagine I'm going to need to... We might be all right for Be it. rest assured. How, 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 how cloudy is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh, we don't want you getting burnt now, do we? No, Mummy! <laughs> <laughs> you can't quite find your ear. <laughs> Take Celeste, they said. Oh. Oh. I can't even see what it looks You look silly. Oh. You will not be burnt though. <laughs> no, Especially no. inside the ear holes. <laughs> <laughs> We're just, well, I know you're really worried. <laughs> <laughs> so, not only do I look like this, I mean, guys, I'm all right, these you are. You might need to use this. Wait. What? <laughs> This <laughs> dust is going to stick to oh, your face. I'm going to dust as well now. I'll poke your ear holes a little bit. This didn't go quite as planned. <laughs> um. Oh, sorry. So we'll just pull up in the car park, turn the camera on, see what's happened. I'm not doing that again. Why, why are we not sticking to a plan? We don't have a plan. <laughs> you need to rub have... your face in a bit more. And your ear holes. Oh, God. <laughs> There's more. Why is there... <laughs> It's more in my ear. <laughs> you might need, like, you like, might need a bit of tissue for your ear rolls. It looks, a tissue look, it looks like I'm a, my ears look like a suntan lotion dispenser right now. Where's the and, tissue at? Oh, I've got to walk around with you, and I better do a proper <laughs> job. Yeah, it's all right. You're my carer today. Every day. Every day, I suppose. There we go. There right, we go. Just, just <laughs> <your side laughs> right, so the flower. Sorry about that interlude, but I'm sure you found it as much as amusing as Celeste did. I want to She's going to take a photo of this now. Your ears whole. We've got. Land's End's just over there, and this lovely little pool which um, Celeste is making me get in. Full of crabs. To be fair, it is is very um, green. It looks absolutely lush, to be fair. But um, with how hot it is and how nice, I'm, I'm fully in at this. So um, like the cream out your ears. It all, might get it? the cream out my ears, but I'm going to go in there and get wet because there's no there's no point in us doing a walk if one of us doesn't get wet. We're both going to get wet. 
just she's holding my camera, so that's <laughs> she's she knows she's safe from getting pushed in when she's got my, <laughs> my spare camera in her hand. So I um, that. the waves are coming in, some amazing waves coming in there, and there's a slipway just over there. So I'm, once I've tested the water, so to speak, in here. Yeah, I'm get in look at the ripples. Those over there. That's so deep. Come yeah, those wicked. Rocks. Come on, I get want to find a drone over there in a bit. In the distance you can see the Longship Rocks. They lie just over a mile off the Land's End coast and are a popular diving area. The lighthouse of the same name was built in 1875 and has to deal with some incredible storms. Well back here at Priest Cove the sea is too rough for me to enter so I was more than happy just milling around in the tidal pool. We had nowhere booked for tonight, so we drove through Penzance, headed for Marazine, and tried to find a campsite for the night, but they were all booked. A quick Google search, and we were heading to St. Lloyd Camping, about five miles from the beautiful village of Malzor. As we arrived at the near empty campsite, we set up camp for the night and enjoyed some nice food, wonderfully prepared by Celeste and a lovely glass of wine. Our friend who lived locally joined us for dinner and brought some fuel so we could enjoy a nice open fire and watch the closest supermoon of the year. Perfect. It only seemed like we slept for a few hours as our alarms were going off at 4.30 so we could get to the fishing port of Mausel and watch the sunrise. From Mausel seafront you can see all around the Penzance Bay and in mid-July the sun rises behind St Michael's Mount. It's picture perfect. On the penultimate day of our adventure, we had a quick early morning visit to the Minak Theatre. The open air theatre is constructed on the edge of a cliff with granite outcrop jutting into the sea. It's truly an incredible sight and over 100,000 people visit every year. En route back to Watergate Bay, we also take a closer look at St Michael's Mount from the air. St Michael's Mount is only accessible by foot at low and mid tide and is run by the National Trust. The castle and chapel have been home for the St Alban family since around 1650. It is believed that St Michael's Mount was the site of monasteries from the 8th until the 11th century 
and there are claims that Archangel Michael appeared before local fishermen in the 15th century too. One of the legends of St Michael's Mount is of an 18 foot giant called Cormoran who lived in a cave and terrorised local towns and villages. A farmer's son called Jack challenged this menace who apparently had an appetite for small children and cattle. Jack allegedly trapped Cormoran in a pit and this was the end of the life of the giant when an axe was brought upon his head. Upon returning home he was named Jack the Giant Killer. A well deserved rest was needed when we got back to Watergate Bay. We had a little time to relax in the sun with some food and wine but reluctantly it's our last day tomorrow and we have to hand the keys back to High Five Camping. So this is where we started a few days ago in Newquay, but we've barely spent any time here. So we're heading down to Little Fistral Beach to watch the final sunrise of our adventure. Little Fistral Beach is a popular spot for van owners, but the beach is only accessible at low tide. Now the sun is up, we're just going to pop over the other side to Fistral Beach and get our last meal and drink before heading back to Dawlish via train. Fistral Beach is one of the world's top surfing destinations with beautiful cliffs and dunes. Fistral Beach is a remarkably popular surf spot for enthusiasts as well as the occasional pro. Lots of surf championships take place here including Boardmasters. Well, the weather is beautiful, but the surf is messy, so there are not many pros here today. But that doesn't matter to us. We're sat here with a nice cold pint, a pizza is on its way, and it's given us time to reflect on what an amazing week we've had so far. We are back where we have started and visited many of Cornwall's beautiful locations along the north, west, and south coast. Our only challenge now is getting back to Dawlish without falling asleep on the train. So until our next adventure from myself, Beach Cam's man, and Celestia the bestie, goodbye and thanks very much for watching. <laughs>